Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. And in this video, I'm going to begin discussing the huge leak of WhatsApp messages related to the government's pandemic handling in the first year. Uh, now, there's a lot in here. And I'm going to begin with discussing how this leak occurred in the first place, why it's been leaked by someone who is by and large on the side of the Tories, and what it means for the COVID inquiry currently being conducted. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So Matt Hancock has been a very, very stupid boy. The big news yesterday was the Daily Telegraph, a very Tory paper, reporting on the leak of 100,000 WhatsApp messages related to COVID handling. Now, I must confess to a little bit of laziness here. It's the following day, and I still haven't read all 100,000 yet. Truth be told, I couldn't, even with time, because all I can see is what the Telegraph want me to see. As far as I know, there's no public access to the files, only what the Telegraph filter allows through for their own purposes, and that is curious in itself. Like, you think to yourself, well, if this leak was intended to provide the public with key information, it would have been handed over to an outlet like The Guardian or Byline Times, or at least made available for public viewing. But this leak was not from an anonymous whistleblower. Oh no, this information, which is putting former Health Secretary Matt Hancock under the spotlight, was leaked by Hancock himself. Accidentally, of course, but very stupidly nonetheless. Towards the end of last year, Matt Hancock was trying to resurrect his public image. He went on a celebrity reality show. He was preparing to bring out a book discussing things from his side, for, you know, over the pandemic handling. And, and he decided to use Isabel Oakeshott to ghostwrite parts of the book. So as far as I can tell, what happened was he just handed Oakeshott the WhatsApp messages uncurated in order that she be able to carry on writing while he was off in the jungle. This was a stunningly bad decision. I don't just mean in hindsight, because she's made some of them public. She has screwed over people in the past in exactly this same way. There are multiple cases of Oakshot betraying confidences of people in order to publish exclusives. In, in the most famous case, someone who trusted her ended up in prison over it. I mean, obviously, she ended up in prison because she broke the law. But from her point of view, if she hadn't a trusted Oakshot, she'd have been fine. Free and clear. The cautionary tale for anyone, even casually observing the career of Isabel Oakshot, is that you do not trust Isabel Oakshot with confidential information. Ever. But that isn't where the stupidity ended. Oakshot was not just someone who was deeply untrustworthy. She was a vocal critic of Hancock's input into our pandemic response in 2020. I don't mean throwing vulnerable people into care homes, you know, in, in, to the wolves. That is what they're bringing up again to attack him with. But that's not what she, uh, she didn't mind that at all. Oddly enough, Hancock, believe it or not, was one of the relatively sane ministers at the time. And he was known to have argued against Johnson's more reckless policies. So Hancock basically handed over a load of confidential messages to someone who was motivated to use them for her own political purposes, which were not at all aligned with Hancock's. Stunningly stupid decision. Hancock tried to claim yesterday that the messages had been doctored. Just making it look worse, Matt. Just making it worse. Now he seems to be facing up to it. He's apologised to colleagues, called it a massive betrayal. Yeah, Matt, Oakshot and betrayal. They sort of go together like ham and eggs, didn't you know? Such an idiot. And do you know what? Do you know what? His book didn't even sell many copies. It was just over 3,000 its first week. It bombed. So he didn't even get anything out of this act of stupidity. Oakshot is claiming that she's publishing the messages in the public interest. No, no, no. She's publishing them because she was one of the people who raged against COVID restrictions and thinks she's now in a position to take revenge and rewrite history. The messages are in the public interest, but this has never been Oakshot's motivation for publishing anything. And I'll tell you what's not in the public interest, just, uh, just feeding us little bits to go along with their own narrative. So what does Oakshot and the Telegraph seek to get out of this? Well, the main focus in the Telegraph yesterday seemed to be Hancock ignoring the medical advice on testing in care homes. This is not news. I talked about it myself as it was happening in 2020. It's not something that's only just emerged now via these WhatsApp messages. We knew back in 2020. This isn't the Telegraph publishing news. It's them taking revenge on Hancock, where it, otherwise they'd have reported it in 2020 when I did. 
They make it seem new because the mainstream media kept quiet about it in return for bungs from the government back in 2020. Obviously, during lockdown, people weren't going out buying papers. Newspapers were in a bit of trouble. So the government did them a favour. It's like, right, OK, uh, you know, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. We will, we will place very expensive adverts on behalf of the government in your papers to keep you going. But anyway, what, what, would, what they're trying to do is use these messages to show that some in government wanted to avoid lockdowns, oh, they're the good guys, and some wanted them to go ahead where well, they're the bad guys. These libertarians have been trying to show that the lockdowns were the wrong policy in the, in the past year or so, and they're trying to reinvent history, and they're trying to do so with these messages as well. Now, just as in 2020, of course, the lockdowns were only made necessary because we went along with their thinking, because we allowed the infection to run out of control. We could have actually potentially avoided lockdowns altogether. We're an island. Very easy to control who enters the country. But we were not carrying out even basic infection checks like forehead temperatures at our ports. I remember when the, the original SARS was doing the rounds. We had all that and that was a much less serious issue. We had more notice than other countries as well. And yet we didn't use that time to prepare. We had a track and isolate system which was working well. It was doing its job. And then Boris Johnson said, no, stop it. We're going to, and he made his famous appeal on the television, we're just going to let the virus run right. It was a deliberate policy, he said. We're going to let the virus run through the country, take it on the chin, and then get this magical immunity. And then when his policies led to disaster, delayed the lockdown decision for at least two weeks too long. As a result, we needed harsher lockdowns than many other countries, and they were in place for longer. That is the fact of the matter. And I'll be discussing how some of these messages demonstrate Johnson's unsuitability later today, unless something else crops up. For now, it's worth considering what the impact of this leak will be. So the intended impact for The Telegraph publishing some of these messages is to ruin the reputation of the people they saw as trying to put some brakes on the plans to just ignore the virus altogether, you know, like we're doing now, and big up those who wanted it to let it rip. But what the actual effect will be is not really clear yet, because now that some of these are in the public, other media outlets, of course, reporting on them and they can present their own, their own spin on things. The problem with Oakshot having these messages is that she will be publishing them for her own ends and she'll only publish the ones that she can use for herself. So it's not in the public interest. So what we're going to see will be, as I say, highly curated. Today's Telegraph front page is trying to paint Gavin Williamson in a better light for having tried to let COVID run right in our schools. It's all quite sickening, really, that what the messages actually show is his utter contempt for teachers. You know, we had to put a lot of extra hours and sometimes money in, in order to be able to teach remotely. The government provided no funding for the resources we needed. We didn't even get webcams out of them. There was also no coherent guidance for best practice. We got nothing from Gavin Williamson's department. He was flapping about like a wet hen while we were having to adapt to a completely new way of teaching at the government's behest. After frontline health and social care workers, teachers are the next most affected by long COVID because of the way the government insisted that COVID be allowed to spread in schools. The Telegraph are whining about the policy for face masks in corridors, but where we needed them was in the classroom. Dozens of people sat in one place for an hour or more at a time. No ventilation because they wouldn't give us uh, air filters either, even though they're quite cheap. You know, that is how you spread an airborne infectious disease. And it did spread. So to see messages where the education secretary at the time was calling teachers lazy and for some of our mainstream media to be using this as some sort of grotesque support for that education secretary, a man who was forced to resign recently for bullying is a bit much to take. So will the ongoing inquiry rebalance this misreporting to the public? I'm not sure. That's the problem. The inquiry is independent, technically, but I mean, there are independent inquiries and there are independent inquiries. A genuinely independent inquiry would have all the information the government could provide in order to reach its conclusions. But Rishi Sunak confirmed yesterday in PMQs that it already had all the resources it needs. Well, that clearly isn't the case, especially now after this leak. It's quite clear the, the inquiry is missing quite a lot of information. So what Sunak has really said in, in Parliament yesterday is it will not be getting any more resources which means it won't be getting the resources it needs at all. Essentially, Tory propaganda outlets get more confidential information to sift through than the supposedly independent inquiry. And here's the thing, when the inquiry does start reporting, 
what's going to be uh, the most... We know that the news that, that is the, of the most interest to the public, rather than in the public interest, is the most sensational. Well, who has the most sensational information? The inquiry or the newspapers who want to rewrite history? That's where I have a bit of an issue. And I've said before, you know, if I were in charge of Labour, I wouldn't necessarily be saying anything now, but I would be planning a new inquiry when I come to power. I would launch a full arm's length public inquiry into learning lessons from our pandemic. I would say, well, this inquiry is going to finish. I would say, oh, no, I'm not sure that really helps prepare us for the next pandemic. So I'm going to launch another one, much wider remit, arm's length, public inquiry, nothing to do with me. We'll just set it going, off it goes, you know, with a view to avoiding the same mistakes next time. I want recommendations. I want lessons to be learned. Very wide remit. And I would hand over every document they ask for. That would set the cat amongst the pigeons. But the problem is, Labour will not have access to every record to hand over because the Tories kept using unsuitable channels of communication. We know, for example, that they've held meetings and no minutes have been taken. Bang out of order. Using WhatsApp like this. Great deal, mostly using WhatsApp, for which there is no record other than that which they keep themselves. You know, these WhatsApp messages, just leaks now, for example, could never have been handed over by a future government because if civil servants were involved in the in the message chain, then I don't know, you know, Chris Whitty and, and Patrick Valance maybe, but you know, if 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 none who would be likely to make a record of it were involved, then the only people who have it are the people involved, and they're not gonna leave it for the future Labour government to hand over. You know, these messages are only in the public arena now because Matt Hancock has no brain. Maybe he contracted COVID a few times, unbeknownst to us. You know, one of the common long-term effects of that is loss of cognitive function, of course. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Probably going to have some more this afternoon. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.